G'day everyone, today we're going to use Python to program the LEGO Spike Prime model Breakdancer, which could also be found under the unit plan life hacks and then Breakdance. Did you know that Python is used by companies like Google, NASA, and even Pixar? It is not just for beginners. It is a powerful tool used by professionals in web development, data science, automation, and of course, robotics. If you're transitioning from word blocks to Python on your Lego Spike Prime, you're taking an exciting step into real world coding, and it might feel tricky at first. Don't worry, this channel is packed full of beginner-friendly Python tutorials to guide you. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that you don't miss out. Now let's take a look at Breakdance. First of all, we go into our Spike software over here. You can access the Breakdance model by clicking on this build uh, instruction menu and then hitting Breakdancer. Or you can click on the unit plans and then you click on life hacks. And then it's the first item in life hacks, which is breakdance. Here you can watch the video with your class and then you press next and then you build the model using your spike prime kit. Make sure you build the left side first before you build the right hand side. Now I love this model because it's super expressive and students find some really cool ways to move this model around. Now, if you have a look at this, uh, these word block codes, it's really straightforward. So here we have um, uh, our motor F, which is the leg motors, and uh, it's being set to a speed of 80%. Then we go to shortest path to zero uh, on our absolute position. Then we wait for a second. After that, we broadcast go. Now, uh, broadcasts um, events do not actually occur inside Python. So we treat these as just um, uh, following lines in your procedural code. After you receive this event, we repeat 10 times where we are spinning motor F for one rotation at a time. And then we wait for a second between each rotation. And also we sync it up with some, uh, some numbers on the matrix. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and aim to do using our program. Click on the home button again, make sure you're out into the home area so that you can click on new project and then you click on Python. And then we're going to call this one break dancer Python. Hit create so that this is our Python file. All right, so how are we going to tackle this? We're going to, first of all, import all the things that we need. So we already have our light matrix. We also need to import port from our hub. And then we also need to import uh, motor from our libraries. It says to await light matrix high. We don't need that for this particular code. And I'm not gonna delete code that I don't need straight away, uh, unless I'm really, um, uh, lacking space, uh, I wouldn't delete any code uh, that was working. I would comment it out that way. If I need it again, I'll just uh, uncomment it. Okay. So here we're going to say await motor.run to absolute position. Um, you see how I don't have to type out all my code if I can see my code pop up in the um, autocomplete menu run to absolute position. And then as soon as you press the open brackets, open parentheses, it'll prompt you and tell you what other things you need to add. Okay. Anything that doesn't have an equal sign afterwards has to be populated. So I need to populate port, uh, which is an integer. Then I have to input position and also velocity. But then inside the directions, uh, there's an equal to motor shortest path. So that's also already a default value. Uh, there's a default value for the brake mode. There's a default value for the acceleration and the default value for the deceleration. So these things I don't need to populate, but the things that don't have an equal sign, I do need to populate. So port is just port.f. Uh, what else do I need? Position, uh, I need to run to position zero. And velocity, I'm gonna make it 720 degrees 
per second. This should make it so that when I run the program, uh, the motor uh, moves to its zero position. Now let's just triple check that that's the case. I'm going to show my model over here. When I press the play button, there we go. It does moves to the zeroth position. Um, so let's continue with our code. After moving to the zero position, we also need to um, uh, wait for one second based on the block code, All right? So we say await, oh, well, actually we don't need to await. We just need to use the run loop dot sleep method. And then sleep MS stands for milliseconds or millis, as we say in Australia. Um, so we're sleeping for exactly 1000 millis. And then we can start doing our loop. So we go for i in range. When we're looping something, we use a for loop. Uh, that way we know exactly how many times it's going to repeat. For i in range 10. Now, how did I know how to write a for loop? Um, it's just basic Python. If you like, you can uh, look through my member videos for basic Python classes uh, to learn all your basic syntax and also your uh, basic functions like writing loops, uh, for loops and while loops, uh, using lists and dictionaries. Uh, those are all in my Python basics classes. You can search them all up. Uh, but today I'm just going to, um, uh, to skim past and uh, show you this code straight away. For i in range 10, that means we're going to repeat something 10 times. What are we repeating? We're going to say light matrix dot write. Oh, we're going to have to write a number, right? So we're going to write the number one to get started. And then we make sure that it's a string so that we are uh, writing to the hub. Um, and then we're going to say await motor dot run for degrees because it's running one rotation. So I'm going to say port F uh, degrees is 360, but it's going anti-clockwise. So I'm going to say minus 360 and the speed is 720 degrees per second. And we also wait for one second between each uh, each movement. So run loop dot sleep milliseconds 1000. All right, so that should make it so that I will um, run the motor for 10 rotations. Let's have a look at the robot. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. That works. All right. Uh, I'm kind of suspecting if the um, move to zero is working. I'll just double check that. Oh, it does work. So it goes to the zero absolute position first before it starts rotating ten times. Okay, that's good. But uh, if you can see over here, I think it's a, uh, it's a little bit dark, but on my screen, here we go. On my screen, it only has the number one, but we should be counting in time with uh, the legs, uh, where it counts from one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So how can I do something like that in Python? I'm going to use a variable called a counter. And uh, that way, I'm going to be able to keep track of how many times I've counted, and then use a very simple logic block to reset so that when it goes uh, counts up to three, it goes back to one again uh, after that. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, here we are. So here we're already writing the number one, but I don't want to write just the number one. I want to keep count using a variable. So count equals one right at the start, right? And then here, uh, I'm just going to say to print count. But then I need to increase it each time. So I'll say um, to 
for every time I loop through, I'll print count, but then I'll also increase it by one. So I'll go like mm, count plus equals one, right? Count plus equals one is the same as count equals count plus one. Okay, it's an increment. So I also need to make it so that it resets back to one after I reach four. So, so I never count four, I go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if count is equal to four, then we're gonna make it so that count equals one. Okay. So that should make it so that, remove, let me remove all that and let's make my screen a little bit bigger. Um, I'm sorry if this, the, the text was too small before, but hopefully everybody was still able to see. So we start with a variable called count, which is equal to one. And then we're going to do this movement of our legs 10 times, all right? Um, for every time I count, I'll check if my count is equal to four or not. If not, if it is, then we make it equal to one again, okay? And then we write the count on the screen, and then we increase the count by one. And then we do that, repeat that 10 times, okay? So we already know that the movement works, but how is this new code going to affect my count? I'm going to put this strategically so that you can see my counter over here on my light matrix. Ugh. Okay, let's do, let's do that. Oh no, that's, that's not good neither. Okay, I'll do that. All right, I'm gonna press play. One, two, three, one, two, three. You see how uh, the count is now uh, working properly and um, the, our character is able to move and um, make the screen print out the correct words. Um, but how about moving the arms at the same time? Because that's, that's, that's one of the, the natural questions that you're gonna be asked. Uh, where are the arms attached to? It's attached to port D for me. So let's have a look at how to move the arms at the same time. I can go uh, and uh, do exactly the same thing um, and then put it onto motor D. Okay, that's going to run motor D um, uh, anti-clockwise 360 degrees as well. However, uh, if I have a weight here, it's going to move the legs first and then it's going to move um, the arms. If I want to make them move at the same, oh, okay. Let's, let's just show you what I mean. Okay, press play. See that? So this moves the legs and then the arms alternately. Yeah, but if you want to make them move at the same time, we're going to need to remove the await part of one of the blocks. So I just remove this. So that means that we run the first one and then not wait for it to finish, but we do wait for the second one to finish, okay? Because if we don't wait for uh, these to finish, then uh, it's gonna go and, and run through all the loops really quickly and not give it any time to, to finish up, okay? So this should make it so that all the arms and the legs are moving at the same time, okay? If you want to learn more about Python and perhaps you already know the basics and you want to become an expert to teach your students, then be sure to consider joining my channel membership. For the price of a couple of coffees each month, you can get access to hundreds of hours of Python, C++, Scratch, and other coding lesson replays for advanced students. By becoming a member, you also directly help support my channel so that I can keep making more coding content. Become a member today by hitting the join button below. And that's it from me today. I'll hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.